Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 6 starts now. Dispatchers in Detroit send out this message almost every day. No transport units available. Some believe ongoing staffing issues are putting people in the city at risk of not getting help in an emergency. Thanks for being with us, everybody. At 6, I'm Kimberly Gill. Good evening, everyone. I'm Karen Drew. In for Devin Skillion tonight. Multiple Detroit Fire EMS units are closed daily or nightly, and it's due to staffing. Insiders call it a major issue, and they also say it is a disaster waiting to happen. But when you ask the fire department, they say it's not a problem. Sean Lay is live from the a view of both sides here, Sean. Let's hear, see what's happening tonight. Two units, only two units closed tonight, including this one, number two, near downtown and midtown. Last night, five units were closed, including four advanced life support units. But get this, Monday, 11 EMS units were closed across the city. We are hearing that some medics are saying they are stretched too thin and are exhausted for a manpower issue. So what's being done about it? The time is 10, 18 hours. There's no transport units available. No other Metro Detroit community hears that alarming message coming from their police and fire dispatchers. No EMS units available in the city. Detroit hears that call just about every day. For months, we have been tracking the number of times EMS units are out of service in the city of Detroit, an issue people living in those areas may not even be aware of. We are no transport units available. There are no transport units available. Let's take Monday, for example, after a weekend of gun violence in the city. Medic 1, Medic 6, Medic 7, Medic 10, Medic 12, Medic 13, Medic 18, Medic 19, Medic 23, Medic 24, Medic 27. All closed due to EMS staffing issues. Insiders say this is a problem. Detroit Fire Administration does not see it that way. And does that concern the department? Uh, well, I'll tell you this, all our firefighters, everybody from the latest one to the vets, they're all trained medical first responder. Some of them are paramedics, some of them are medics. And currently we have like 50 medics in class right now in school, the dual roles. In July, we're going to hire another class. The minimum of that class will be 50. So we're hoping between 50 and 100. So we're, we're constantly staffing, we're constantly beefing up in our troops. So we're doing pretty good right now. We're in a good space. Now, you need to know that Detroit Fire responds to every emergency. If a transport unit isn't available, a fire engine goes with medically trained firefighters to stabilize a patient, but then have to wait then for a transport unit and ambulance. Now, Chief Harris says with 50 new people coming on duty here in the near future, he says more ambulances will be on duty in service across the city. We're live tonight. Sean Lane, Local 4, back to you. Okay, Sean, thanks. Well, it all happened so fast. This little dog named Buttercup was out on a walk with her owner over in Warren when a Rottweiler broke free and then went on the attack. Buttercup didn't make it through. And the family says little has been done to address what happened. Rod Maloney joins us live this evening on this story. And Buttercup was a beloved member of the family, Rod. Yeah, a family dog. And in fact, it was the 15-year-old daughter that was out walking Buttercup about a half a mile from the house, and they didn't see this coming at all. They did not expect to see the dog named Maverick coming out from behind the fence. Jill Demenyuk's family is traumatized. The name Buttercup tells you exactly what kind of dog Buttercup was. A gentle, loving, quiet, you didn't even know she was around. The year old pup didn't stand a chance. Disconnected the spine from the tail. Um, you know, three broken ribs, blood in the lungs. She was a mess, just a mess. It happened on this sidewalk on 14 Mile. The fence unable to contain the furious dog. Jill claims the signs are new since last Thursday's attack. Initially, Warren police gave the owner a ticket. She ended up being able to keep the dog in her house, quarantine, which is still a threat to other dogs. This particular dog also bit another lady's dog and her son already. She showed us that police report along with the one that she has for Buttercup's attack. Jill continued complaining to City Hall, and last night Warren PD rounded up the Rottweiler and brought it to animal control. We felt so much more peace, but then we got a call at 8.30 last night saying the dog is now gone, but she's going to fight to get it back. In the meantime, the family has buried Buttercup in their backyard. They're awaiting a marker. She got to have her dog, and I'm staring at a grave of a dog that, honestly, everybody loved. 
So Warren PD did confirm for us that they did pick up the Rottweiler, did bring it to animal control, and it's going to remain there. Jill says, though, that she intends more legal action in her case, but in a larger arena, she wants to see more done to prevent these kinds of problems and getting action on them more quickly in the future. Back to you. That's heartbreaking, Rod. Have you heard from anyone else, by the way, involved in these attacks? Well, we, we reached out, we door knocked, and we did reach out to the owner of the dog. We got no response there. We also tried to talk to the woman who lives only just a couple of doors down uh, with her incident with her son actually getting bit, bitten along with their dog back in September. We didn't hear back from anybody yet, uh, but certainly we have those calls out and yeah. hope to hear back at some point. Thinking about Jill and her family. All right. Thank you very much, Rod. We appreciate it. Late this afternoon, the U.S. Supreme Court temporarily extended women's access to the abortion, um, abortion pill, mefeprestone. Yeah, that extension lasts until Friday, while judges consider a lower court's decision to revoke the drug's FDA approval. Will Jones is following the news out of Washington and has a look at what the decision could mean for Michigan. Will. Kimberly and Karen, well, the state is ready to pivot whatever comes down from the Supreme Court on Friday. Right now, the governor is taking a wait and see approach. Abortion rights supporters and opponents in Michigan reacting to the Supreme Court extending access to the abortion drug Mifepristone. Given how fast this case has moved from the Texas District Court to the Fifth Circuit and then the emergency appeal up to the Supreme Court, it really does not surprise me that they need more time to review everything. I do worry that patients might think that abortion is no longer accessible, as this is in the news. According to the brief order issued by Justice Samuel Alito, the court said the hope first announced last week would be extended another two days. It means that women can still access Mifepristone by mail. It gives justices time to consider whether to allow restrictions on the drug to take effect. Mifepristone is a safe and effective medication for people to use uh, for an abortion. I really hope the justice is served and that the Supreme Court will, in fact, rule that the FDA was politically motivated and coerced into approving the abortion pill in the year 2000 unlawfully. A spokesperson for Governor Whitmer's office saying, we are keeping tabs on the court's activity today. If, when a decision is announced, we will review and determine next steps. Medication abortion accounts for half of the abortions in the U.S., so now the wait continues for what the Supreme Court will decide on Friday. We are live tonight. Will Jones, Local 4. We will be following it. Will, thank you. Michigan Democrats have sent more gun legislation to Governor Gretchen Whitmer for her, her signature. This time it is a so-called red flag bill that will allow family members or police to petition a court to remove weapons from someone who is in eminent danger to themselves or someone else. Whitmer has 14 days to sign the bill. Last Thursday, she signed a new gun storage bill and also expanded background checks into law. Today, Attorney General Dana Nessel says she is ready to defend any of the new laws if they're challenged in court. The diagnosis of ADHD and treatment with prescription medications has really increased substantially in the past couple of decades. And now a University of Michigan study finds the increased access to these medications is having a carryover effect into abuse trends. Dr. Frank McGeorge is here to explain what researchers discovered, Doc. Yeah, well, the information actually comes from the Monitoring the Future study. That's an annual survey of 8th, 10th, and 12th grade students that's published in JAMA. Now, overall, they found one in four middle and high school students may be abusing ADHD medications. Specifically, they found that while some schools had little to no misuse of ADHD medications, in other schools, more than 25% of students had, un had used stimulants in non-medical ways. Now, students attending schools with the highest rate of kids that were actively being treated for ADHD, they had a 36% increased chance of non-medical stimulant use. Now, these medications can be abused to get high or combined with alcohol or other drugs to boost the high. Also, keep in mind, in some environments, these stimulants are being abused to actually enhance academic performance. Now, suburban schools in all parts of the U.S., except the Northeast, had higher rates of teen misuse of ADHD medications, and also schools with more white students and those who had medium levels of binge drinking were also more likely to see stimulant abuse. Interesting, interesting. So besides being at a school where more kids were on ADHD medications, were there any other things that pre 
predicted a higher level of abuse of these drugs? Well, not surprisingly, you might imagine that if students used marijuana in the past 30 days, they were four times more likely to abuse mm -hmm. stimulants compared to teens who didn't use marijuana. So here's the big picture. Regardless of the reason that your child might have uh, that higher risk, knowing those risks really only helps if parents intervene. Mm -hmm. So don't assume that your child is immune. You just have to have the conversations and ultimately okay. set the expectations with them. Don't ignore the red flags. Communicate. All right. All right. Thanks, Thank you. Mm -hmm. Well, after a really sunny early afternoon, the clou clouds are starting to build in as we head into tonight. Let's get over to Brian Sherman. He's in for Kim Adams tonight. Brian, are we going to see any rain? We may, Kimberly and Karen, especially north of the metro, north of M59 late tonight as a warm front moves through the region, but we're going to keep the mild temperatures in overnight tonight and early tomorrow morning as well. Tower cam over downtown Detroit. The cloud cover thickening up, but we still got a little sunshine as we head towards sunset this evening. Most everyone into the upper 40s and lower 50s. 43 right now here in Detroit. Same over in Ann Arbor. One of our cooler spots up in Port Huron checking in at 45 and 56 right now as you work down into Adrian. Winds are a little breezy out of the east southeast to southeast at about 5 to 15 miles an hour. And for the most part, that's drug temperatures about 5 to 10 degrees warmer this afternoon than where we were yesterday. We'll continue that warming trend as we head into our Thursday as well. I'm watching a disturbance off to the north here. Some rain in some of the central portions of the state closing in on Grand Rapids. This may May give us a little shower activity off to our north tonight. Other than that, mostly cloudy skies can be expected. We're down into the 40s by early tomorrow morning. We'll talk more about the record heat that may close in on us tomorrow. The details on that and our weekend rain chances. Your full worn forecast coming up in just a few minutes. Also a good time. Download that forewarn weather app. Exact track 40 future track and weather alerts in the palm of your hands. You can find it in your favorite app store. Just search WDIV.